This episode of Anxiety Slayer is sponsored by Anxiously Ever After, a memoir by parenting blogger and best-selling author Clint Edwards. Get your copy at bookshop.org or wherever books are sold. Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my good friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. We're celebrating our 13th anniversary this month and offering 50% savings on every course in the Anxiety Slayer Academy at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. This is the perfect time to explore our course offerings for health anxiety, anxiety attacks, and more. Today, we're responding to several questions from our private Facebook group asking us to talk more about health anxiety. Health anxiety is top of mind for many of our listeners, Welcome back for another week of conversation, Ananga. It's so good to be with you. Hey, Shen. How to slay your health anxiety. I believe that this could be a topic we could discuss most weeks. It's so prevalent for so many of our listeners. It is. It's such a a unique kind of anxiety that really does haunt the mind. And it's very challenging to live with and try and get a handle on. Everyone's mind has its vulnerable spots, and that's where anxiety will strike, especially if we're already stressed and highly sensitive, and many of us have anxiety about our mortality or the things that can go wrong with the body, so it's very easy for anxiety to strike there. And also, as we've often mentioned seasonally in previous years, the autumn or fall season, depending on where you are in the world, is particularly challenging for anxiety. And Ayurveda, India's ancient science of life, teaches that this is a season that can really provoke the energy that gives rise to anxiety in our mind. And it's also a season that can cause extra discomfort in the body, some dryness and aches and pains. So a season to really take care of our well-being and our anxiety and just to be mindful that it is a time of year when we can be nudged to worry quite a bit more. I'm glad that you brought that up because seasonal changes are something that we're not always aware how they affect our mind. Right now I'm looking outside and the beautiful tree that was covered in golden leaves last week is bare. And my garden that, that had all those gorgeous flowers a few weeks back, uh, those, those are gone. And there's a metaphor there for the things that we're letting fall away as well as we move into this new season. And in knowing that, we can take such better care of ourselves when we know how the autumn time or the winter time will affect us and affect our doshas. Yeah, the loss of light, the cold coming in, the windier nature. In the UK, we get quite windy weather at this time of year. We need to know how to curl up, keep warm, keep quiet. Do we need, you know, earplugs, noise cancelling headphones, oil in our ears? We need to know how to respond to what's happening around us. And, and the first thing there is to be aware of it. And that also applies to health anxiety to gain understanding of the specifics of what's making us anxious, which is what we're going to be talking about in the first part of this episode to explore. What's going on? What really is causing concern about health? It's usually the last thing we want to do. We normally want to distract, run away, escape, but anxiety is such an inside job. It's happening in our mind and there are symptoms happening in our body. So we're, we're in there with it. And it really helps to understand more of what's going on with a view of getting the support we need for our experience. So a little bit of courage there to look inwards and ask some questions, but it will all feel so much better once we've done that because we know what kind of help we need. Health anxiety isn't the same for everyone. It's not the same for everyone. And there's so many examples of the things that trigger us, whether that be bad experiences from the past, a fear of what we call the white coats or or going to the doctor, 
a dislike of being scrutinized or scrutiny through testing and poking and prodding and those kinds of things. The whole general health what ifs that can come along with health anxiety. You might get triggered from a family member or a friend around something that's going on in, in their body or in their mind, or that, that makes you worry about your own. It could be a good friend who's dealing with something really heavy. It could be a trigger from the news or something that you're watching on television or watching online. The news media has, it's almost like they cycle through fear topics when it comes to your health. Now, obviously, COVID, here we are, air quotes, post-COVID, right? The pandemic and, st- and stuff. And, and that was every single day for over two years that we were hearing about that. And that kicks up a lot of fear in your mind, of course. You don't want to get it, that you don't want to give it, that you don't want to die, that you, oh my goodness, what's next? And then when it's not something as as huge as COVID, it's something else. So it'll be, this week it'll be Ebola, next week it'll be uh, bird flu, and it goes on and on. And depending on how your mind is constructed, you could fall into that place of really feeling like, oh my goodness, what if that happens? Oh my gosh, now it's this, now it's that, now it's this. Well, it's always going to be this or that. It's never going to stop, unfortunately. So the thing that you can do is take a break from watching the news and to really be mindful of of the um, movies and programs and things that you allow in, because if your mind is already fragile, that's going to be tough. I know you have some feedback that you'd like to share as I as I was moving through those examples, Ananga. Yeah, just touching back on a couple of them. The, the first one, past bad experiences. What do we mean when we mention that? And that's to look back if you feel anxious about a hospital appointment or a checkup or a visit to the doctor, to just ask yourself, where's this coming from? And it might be general discomfort that you just you know, not really happy making those visits. Many people aren't. Or it might be that you can recall an experience in the past that was uncomfortable. Maybe it felt controlling or you felt you weren't heard or the practitioner wasn't particularly sympathetic as I'm saying it. Two memories have flashed up in my mind that I'd forgotten about for a long time of negative experiences when I was young with tests with kind of older, bald headed, stern men. <laughs> Two very different guys, but they looked very similar and their attitude felt similar. And I almost felt like ridiculed by them, very uncomfortable with them. Yeah. So that's a real classic example of that kind of thing that can lurk in the mind. A great case for tapping, which we're going to talk more about in a few minutes. Yeah. If you've had a past bad experience with a medical exam or a hospital experience, whatever your personal experience may be, there are ways to diffuse the anxiety in that experience. It can be done with neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, different modalities, different therapies, EFT tapping, something we share a lot here. You might want to go through it with a counselor or a practitioner of one of those two skill sets that I just mentioned. See if you can get some help clearing it. Mm -hmm. And if that brings you some peace that you can put it in the past as a memory that doesn't have an emotional charge for you anymore. And then you can go ahead and get the healthcare you need more peacefully. Same with fear of the white coats, as as people often refer to it. Again, a great case for EFT tapping to diffuse that fear. Sometimes it's a dislike of scrutiny. I personally have a discomfort with that. I can feel as uncomfortable getting my eyes tested as going to the dentist. Me too. Yeah, I think we've spoken about that before. I don't like people too close to my face. Yeah. I don't like people looking in my face <laughs> <laughs> with torches and stuff. So that's something I've had to work on. And that's where a wonderful technique that we probably haven't spoken about for a little while called the calming point comes in, where you press the thumb of your right hand into the center of your left palm and take steady, deep breaths. And it helps you feel much more relaxed and and calm that got me through a, a wisdom tooth extraction quite peacefully, surprisingly peacefully. So good 
skills to learn. You can find out more about that one on our website as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Looking through, you know, have I had a past bad experience? Is it that I don't like people too close up, scrutinizing my body? Learning what the triggers are, learning and respecting ourselves individually, how things affect us, and then looking at tools and techniques to help us settle that when we've been triggered. Yeah, because once you can get specific, once you can drill down into what may be going on, that's when you can really start taking action and use these tools and calm your fears and calm your anxious mind. Mm. Let's move on and talk about some of the tapping stories and tapping experiences that you've had, that we've both had, and the use of tapping to calm health anxiety that I think would be quite helpful. Yeah, so for anyone who's new to this topic, we're talking about EFT, tapping. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, and tapping is a technique where you tap on specific meridian points on the body for a variety of benefits, but one of them is calming anxiety. And you can find out more about tapping on our website at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. You can also find a link there to our free course, which has some tapping examples. So this is a wonderful technique that helps us tune in to specific anxieties and fears and diffuse them. I've been using tapping for about 25 years now, teaching it, sharing it, wrote a book on it, used to teach workshops on it. I'm really amazed after so many years to see again and again how much tapping can help. And it's a wonderful tool to learn and it's a very creative technique. And when it comes to health anxiety, there are some great and easy ways you can use it. For one example, many people get anxious about their blood pressure. And when you feel anxious about something regularly and over time, then any objects around that anxiety can become triggers. So I've worked with clients in the past that needed to take their blood pressure regularly, needed to measure their blood pressure. So they'd get the blood pressure monitor And the second they saw that machine, it's almost like there's a part of your mind that feels that that machine's going to decide your fate. You're going to put the cuff on your arm and that machine is going to deliver the numbers that are going to make you feel relieved or stressed. So that blood pressure monitor can become a trigger. So a really simple way of using EFT is to get the monitor, stick it in front of you and tap the EFT points through and just speak aloud about your relationship with that that device or even just have it there because it's already a trigger and just tap and breathe and tap and breathe until you feel calm and neutral about it. And so you're using a trigger in your environment as a prompt for a tapping session. And that's going to help your blood pressure reading because you're going to be calm and relaxed when you take the reading, but also it stops that device becoming a trigger instead of just a a measuring tool. So that, that's one example. Um, there's many ways of using tapping to become calm before tests and appointments or over anxiety around doctors. You might want to look up a practitioner and work with somebody one-to-one or you can find help in the Anxiety Slayer Academy. We have a course which is specifically about tapping and health anxiety with some guided sessions. But it's a great tool. I really recommend that anyone learns EFT tapping. It's such a flexible and effective tool. I was helping somebody just a few weeks ago who had quite an intense fear of spiders, and they've messaged me a couple of times since to say how they've caught some spiders, put them outside. Um, They were having bad dreams about spiders, which have completely stopped, and they were having nightmares about once a week, Mm. quite intensely, completely stopped since we tapped together. So it's a great tool to learn with such a variety of applications that I really recommend looking into it. It's it's wonderful to have something you can turn to and something you can use when you're really feeling health anxiety. Being able to understand our triggers and diffuse them is magic. So if you've been thinking about tapping and haven't tried it, please give it a try. You can get the tapping points at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. And again, we have more information in our courses at teachable.com. And remember, everything right now is half price through the end of October. So if that feels good to you, 
Check it out. From Page Street Publishing Co. comes Anxiously Ever After, a poignant new memoir by parenting blogger and best-selling author Clint Edwards. In the book, Clint explores his lifelong struggle with mental illness in the shadow of his father's battle with the opioid epidemic and his mother's undiagnosed mental illness. From being diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive disorder to finding love, marriage, and having children, Clint explores what it means to find a healthy and balanced life when mental illness is your co-pilot. Clint touches on the crux of living moment to moment, struggle to struggle, without losing your ever-loving mind. Clint's candor, critical self-awareness, and refreshing sense of humor make for a -a one-of-a-kind read that might just make you feel less alone. It's your copy of Anxiously Ever After at bookshop.org or wherever books are sold. Before the break, we were talking about how tapping can help with so many health anxiety issues. And now we're going to roll into general support for health anxiety and what you can do to support yourself when your mind is feeling a little bit off and a little worried about your health. Yeah, I've always found it really helpful to have healthy habits that calm the mind, but also are good for your body and for your well-being. There are some healthy habits we can bring into our daily life that really break the spell of health anxiety because they help us move from being caught in fearful thinking, which can really freeze you. That kind of anxiety really holds you on the spot, and then it's hard to do anything to help yourself feel more calm. So it breaks that spell from being caught in fearful thinking, to being proactive and moving into self-care. And that alone, that change alone can break the spell of anxiety. So we have some suggestions that help with that. At the top of the list for me is being able to talk with a trusted friend like you, Ananga, or a family member about how you're feeling and what's coming up for you. This is a person that you feel safe with that can hear you. This is a maybe a situation where you just want to be heard without any advice or suggestion, but to just know that somebody's there for you and witnessing what's happening in your mind. And then the rest of the list are things that you can just do for yourself. You can choose to do them all or whatever speaks to you at the time. Listening to relaxing music is always helpful when I'm feeling a bit jangly and anxious about anything. Put on some music, I'll put on my headphones, and just really... I was listening to some classical music over the weekend. I had some traveling to do and haven't done a lot of that on my own. And just having this beautiful music playing helped me move through the experience so much easier. And if you've listened to us at all, you know Ananga and I are all about running a hot salt bath. <laughs> we get our bones in the bath when, whenever we possibly can. It's such a loving way to calm your nerves, and we highly recommend that. Self-oil massage or seeing a massage therapist is another wonderful way to care for yourself, to love yourself up this time of year, getting more oil massaged into your body, sesame oil, a nice high-grade sesame oil. It's just so loving for your body, for your skin, for your nervous system. And if you can, see a massage therapist and get a nice massage, get that energy moved throughout your entire body from somebody who is very good at what they do and can help you feel so much more calm and relaxed. Shiatsu is also a wonderful choice to clear stagnant energy. And I love my shiatsu practitioner. I've been doing shiatsu now for a couple of years, and it's been a nice addition to all of these other things that that I've already shared. Ananga, do you want to cover the rest? Yeah, I think um, movement is always helpful. It sounds like such a basic thing to mention. But again, it sits with that point about being caught in fear 
Ayurveda describes a lower energy of the mind that can really hold us inert and is a fearful energy. And one of the ways to break out of that is to move. Sometimes we might feel almost stuck in our chair or frozen to the spot wherever we are when we feel really fearful and a thought comes into our mind and it holds our mind hostage and then that energy of freeze just goes straight through the body. So even to just start shaking your hands, shrugging your shoulders, just moving your body around um, as best you can and as quickly as you can when an anxious thought comes into your mind is really helpful and it changes that energy from frozen to moving. It gives us an opportunity to then make other choices that are going to support us and help us feel calm. If you're alone and or somewhere private and it's you know a, a good opportunity to do so, you could put on some music and just shake your body, stretch your body, or dance in defiance <laughs> of, mm-hmm. of what's going on in your mind. But eventually the, the message gets through to the body. Uh, take a walk. If not, um, there's a wonderful account I read of one very inspiring woman who walked through a year of intense grief. And it was complex grief. It wasn't, grief is always painful and difficult, but this was a, particularly complex story, many layered grief. And she shared how she would march out of her door every day and just walk, which I found really inspiring and backs up this point of walking through whatever's going on in our mind and body. So always a good thing to do that too. If ever I have a high adrenaline state in my body, I will make a point of stepping outside and walking it off. Otherwise that adrenaline is just going into our tissues and causing us more of a heightened anxiety state. So walking, running, dancing, swimming, shaking it off, qigong, yoga, mindful moving, anything that appeals to you that you can bring into your day. And we don't need to wait until we feel anxious to do it, although it's great to switch into that to calm anxiety when those moments do arise in our mind. But if we can bring these things into our day as a daily practice, then we're protecting ourselves from anxiety and taking really good care of our health, which is always such a calming thought when we're suffering with health anxiety. And we're all too aware of the effects stress can have on our body. Sometimes we can feel kind of caught in that loop of feeling so worried and stressed and then worried that we're harming ourselves by the worry. Then pick something to do that calms the mind and takes care of the body. And of course, we have to mention deep breathing exercises, any kind of breathing exercise, just even stopping for a moment to take a few deep cleansing breaths can make a difference. Because when we're anxious, we breathe in a real shallow place. And when we breathe deeply, you can almost immediately feel your entire nervous system relax because you've taken a moment to give it what it needs. So deep breathing any practice is going to be helpful. And we have lots of calming essential oils that we've recommended. Really important. And if you're not into essential oils or you're looking to get your first batch, you'd be looking at lavender or monongalite vetiver. These are all nice calming essential oils that you can use in support of your nervous system. Yeah, lemon balm, so many beautiful scents. And that's such an easy thing to diffuse into your room and you can have that set up before sleep or when you're getting going in the morning or reading and relaxing in the evening just to have these things around and ready to go to calm the mind. It's another thing really not to be taken lightly. Essential oils have been used for thousands of years for calming the mind, boosting the immune system, looking after our respiratory system, so many benefits. So It can be nice to get a good book on essential oils if you feel anxious about your health. Make it an interest, a new interest to educate yourself about what oils might be helpful to you and draw your mind away from anxiety by pulling it into learning something new, something healing, learn about yoga, learn about qigong, something that speaks to you, something that interests you, upgrading your nutrition. Pull your mind away from anxiety and into proactivity and that always makes a huge difference. Um, Breathing is always really important when we breathe 
rapidly as we tend to when we're anxious and, and we take shallow breaths that stirs up the thoughts in our minds more. Both Ayurveda and yoga teach that the rate of our thoughts is directly related to the rate of our breath. We get a lot of questions about you know, unwanted thoughts and fast thoughts breaking into the mind and running over and over. Learning some calming breathing practices is one of the best things you can do for that. As you change your breathing, it tells your mind that you've got this and you're helping yourself feel more calm. We have lots of guided breathing sessions, guided relaxations on our Patreon at patreon.com slash anxiety slayer. We have some guided tapping sessions there too. So if you want some guided practices to follow along with us, you can take a look there for extra support. Any calming self-care skills that you can learn are going to help you feel better, are going to help you slay your health anxiety. Listen to this episode again if you need to. Take a peek at the show notes. We've got so many suggestions for you. And know that we're here in your corner. We want to help you any way we can. Thanks so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer. In celebration of our 13th anniversary, you can get our online course for health anxiety at the Anxiety Slayer Academy for 50% off. You'll learn how to stop health anxiety thoughts from spiraling out of control and hijacking your mind. Some of the lessons in this course include how to stop anxiously fixating on symptoms and sensations in your body, how to use EFT tapping to stop health anxiety and build your peace of mind, plus a calming breathing practice for slowing racing thoughts. Get the Health Anxiety course for half price with the coupon code HALFPRICESALE at anxietyslayer.teachable.com.